So in this video, I'm going to show you how to color a female comic book character in an alluring, aesthetically pleasing way that makes the female character look attractive, beautiful, and all of that good stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do, and we're going to focus on the bottom panel here, is I'm going to pick a background color for said panel. I'll pick something like this. Got my marquee tool selected. I'll drag a selection over the panel in its entirety. Right click, fill, foreground color, done. Then we'll zoom in here. And I'm also going to go ahead and just fill in the background. The page background, that is. There we go. And then we'll place down the flats, the base colors for the female character. We won't worry about the Goblin King for now, because I really only want to show you the process for coloring a female character. Okay, so we will pick something like this, a little bit of red, maybe add more yellow to that red for the skin tone. Desaturate it a fair bit. And take the brightness to about here. And then I'll go ahead, make sure that I've got a flat, completely opaque round brush selected. And then I'll start just filling it in. Like so. And I'm pretty rough with it because I can always go around the outside edges with an eraser and just clean this up a little bit if I feel it needs it keeping inside the lines as much as possible you really don't want your flats traveling outside the boundaries of your key contours so the outline of the character in other words so just be wary of that make sure that you're paying attention to it Change the eraser to a completely flat, opaque round brush as well. And as I said before, I'm going to go around the edges now and just make sure those flats are residing within the boundaries of the character's outline. Okay, so it's just like a coloring in book. You don't want to go outside the lines. There we go. Now, the color of her outfit, we'll make that a purple. Desaturate it a little. Okay, and then we'll start filling it in, still on the same layer. And I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. So this character has a number of different elements in her design that need to be filled in with a base color. And ideally, what I want to make sure happens while I'm establishing these base colors, if they're not already defined, is that they go together well. They complement one another. That's extremely important. She's got this golden armband around her upper arm. I'll fill that in. So that's done. And then I'll give her some nice red lipstick. blue eyes and 
think it'd be a little bit more desaturated, I think. There we go. And then we have some white here. In the whites of her eyes. So I'll place that in. You can see that I'm working from a bit of a distance here. That'll become even more important in a moment when we start to actually shade this character. And then finally we need to place in a base color for her hair. And that's just going to be a very desaturated black color. So something like this. All of these colors can be adjusted later on, so I'm not feeling too worried about what I'm selecting at this point in this point in time, because if I don't like it, I can simply go back, make some tweaks if needed, and it's all good. Okay, great. So now she is ready to actually start shading. <coughs> so what I'm going to do next is apply a layer, new, new fill layer, solid color, hit OK, and we will make this a, it's up to you as to what you decide to make it. We'll go for a warmer tone here. Maybe something like this. Click OK. Change it to multiply. Might even make it just a bit more red. Turn down the opacity somewhat. And there we go. Beautiful. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and start to paint out the main forms, the, the major forms, the macro forms, if you will, the overall base forms. Okay, so we're not talking about secondary or surface texture forms, right? We don't want to be talking about the micro forms that are going to be placed on top of the major forms. We want to be just focused on the major forms. Okay, so if I think of the head's major form, what is that? Well, it's a sphere. If I think of the chest's major form, well, it is an egg. If I think of the major forms of the breasts, well, they're just spheres as well. Same with the shoulder, the cylinder for the arm, etc. Okay, we want to be thinking in these basic terms because that's what's going to allow us to establish the fall off of light as it cast down upon the character, lights those forms, and thus describes them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to make a selection just around her face here to begin with. And we'll start off by laying in a highlight for that. Now we just want to be, you know, very, very subtle with the amount of light that we're giving this area to begin with. So I'm going to take my opacity for my brush down to about 60%. I mean, maybe even, you know, maybe even 30. I'm going to change it to an airbrush. And that'll do. And you'll notice that I've actually set my color to black so this works in grayscale all right and then i'm just going to you can see how big my brush actually is okay i'm making it quite large so i'm just going to light it i know that my light source is coming from the top right so i'm going to light this basic sphere form which i'm interpreting the head as being based on that light direction okay and there we have it all right, it already looks as though there is some form to her head, even though we really haven't done a whole lot. Next up, we've got the shoulder and the neck and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and we'll just, <clears throat> we'll select those. I'll go back down to my flats layer here. Get my magic wand tool. 
just so that we can make those selections real quick. We'll deselect the head because we're done with that for now. We don't want to. We don't want to add any more light to it, at least for the moment. Yeah, this is like phase one. So go ahead and. What is the neck really? Well, it's just a cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to shade it as such. That's the broad form that we're dealing with to begin. And then later on, when we start to knock out some of the details, then we can get into the nitty gritty of it. But the other thing that I want to keep in mind is where is the lightest point of the character overall? Is it her head? Is that where the light is going to be its brightest? Well, if so, that means that we've got to make sure that the dispersion of light falls off accordingly across the rest of the body, which means the head is going to be the brightest, and then there's going to be somewhat of a subtle gradient from the lightest point to the darkest point of the character that begins to happen. Okay, so I'll lay in the shoulder now. So again, and I'm airbrushing here, right? I'm not making really any selections other than the selections around the flats. I'm going to build out the shoulder. Remember, that's just a sphere. And then the arms are a cylinder. Okay, so we'll treat them as such, thinking about where upon these forms the lightest area will be. Okay, now the chest. This is where a lot of people get a little bit confused. Um, the chest is an egg shape, which means the top of the chest is going to be somewhat lit here. Okay. And then the breasts sit on top of it. Right? Now the breasts are basically like the secondary forms that sit on top of the chest, so just you know keep that in mind. Okay, and there we have it. That is most of it shaded and ready to roll. Now I am looking at the face and comparing it to the chest. And I'm asking myself, well, does that make sense? Or does the chest actually need a little bit more light being shone onto it? So I'm adding that in there. Now remember, it's not going to be directly above. Okay, it's not going to be cast down from directly above because the light is coming down from the top right. Okay. Sometimes I get my directions mixed up, so forgive me if that happens. Okay, and now we have her outfit. So we'll go ahead and we'll select that, hide selection, oops, we were on a, the wrong layer there, always be looking out for that. So the breast is just a sphere, right? I'm going to treat that sphere as such. All right, and there we go, done. So now that that's been executed, the first step, we are able to start making our selections. So now I'm thinking, well, where where the cast shadow is actually going to be? Now around the, and, and also the other shadows, where do we want to start cutting shadows back in? Because that's going to be also important. So I'm going to start off by doing that around the breasts. I'll show you how I execute this step. Basically, I know that there's going to be a shadow that comes about right here. So I'm going to change my brush to white, my brush color. And I'm going to start laying some shadows back in along that edge. There you go. And I've got my my smudge tool here, and I like to just if this needs to be adjusted, I'll just you know pull it back over there. Okay, great. Same with this side. You know, I may may want to go ahead and add in a bit of shadow there, maybe. But but honestly, I think it's okay. I think I like it that way. I think I like it as is. So we'll just 
leave it like that for now. All right, great. So now I know that there's going to be a car shadow around the eye here. So I'll paint that in. And also around her other eye, under the brow. This is all lighting. Lighting is what helps us to describe form. Without lighting, what we have is just a flat shape. What makes up lighting? Shadow and highlight. So what we're trying to, what the biggest challenge is, because that's not really that complicated in and of itself, is we're then trying to describe the forms of the characters in an accurate way that makes sense. And in an aesthetic way too, an aesthetically pleasing way. Sometimes just because something is accurate doesn't mean it is going to look good. So I'm going in under the nose because I know there's going to be a shadow under the bottom plane of the nose and that it's also going to cast a shadow across the rest of the face. So we'll add that in there. And then around the base of the mouth. Now, because we're dealing with a female character here, we, you know, we want to try to make a, a character that's alluring, that's attractive, that is going to be easy on the eyes. Okay. And that can be tough to do for female characters. Because in order to pull that off well, I mean, you don't really have that much at your disposal to use. You can't go ahead and describe all the different forms of anatomy because the forms in a female character are a little bit more subtle. And the more that you describe them, the more masculine that they're going to look. So you got to be really careful with it. Okay, cool. Um, now, around the eye socket, there's also going to be a little bit of shadow here. around there. Again, I'll use my smudge tool if I need to, just to lift up those selections if I haven't quite done them correctly. And I know that the same shadow is going to occur on the other side around the eye socket, so we'll add that in. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and start actually making some highlight selections. Now, I'll do that on a new layer. be selecting a new color for it as well so we'll just increase that there and you know what color is my light going to be is it going to be yellow maybe so I'll add more yellow to it done might desaturate it somewhat and then I'll just tap lightly into that area that I've just selected Now, when it comes to noses, uh, this is this is very interesting, right? Because what I in fact want to do is go back down to my shadow layer, and I'm just going to take my brush right down so that it's very very small, and then I'm going to shade in the edge, the highlight edge of the nose. It's going to be illuminated. 
Now, it's only going to be pretty thin, right? Because it's the corner of the nose. And sometimes I'm not always going to get it right, so if I don't get it right, I'll go back. Hitting that undo key like it's no one's business. And again, that's too bright, right? I want it subtle. And this is just going to give me an idea for where my selections are going to go. So we'll go back up to the layer above, the highlight layer. And then we can go ahead and... Make a selection for the corner of the nose there. Tap once. Make a little selection right on the tip of the nose, just to describe the bulb at the tip. That's done. Beautiful. All right. And now we've got this section in here, which is usually actually quite light. character so I'll add that in there and then we've got the rest of her face which I'm going to go ahead and select now and this is where things get interesting so I don't necessarily want to go right to the edge Right? I don't necessarily want to do this, because that's just going to look weird. Uh, instead, I'm going to tap somewhere within that selection, bringing out the cheek just enough. And, you know, do I, do I want her to have high cheeks? Oh, hang on. I'm going to have to make that selection again. Whoops. Now it's actually really hard to shade a female character well, so that's why I'm making this tutorial. Alright, so we'll tap once, go in, tap again, shrink the brush down, tap again, and... Hmm. Go down to the chin. Now you want to be thinking about your head planes here a little bit. And, you know, it, a female face is, is soft, right? Grab our smudge tool here for a moment. Reposition this a bit if need be. That's not exactly looking ideal. So we'll just take this back. This is the beauty of having the highlights in another layer. You can always go ahead and do some erasing. So I'm just going to airbrush some of this in now um, to make it soft. Around the chin. I'll make a selection again. Maybe this time we'll have some better luck. Hmm. Hmm, that didn't quite work out, did it? Let's have another crack. The point is, is that we never give up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then I might go in again 
and add another highlight to the top of the chin there using my selection of course see that beautiful that's come out really really nice and then of course around the top of the mouth here that's a form in and of itself so now we're getting down to the secondary forms and then we've got her cheek up here a bit more of a prominent form which is quite large okay done and if I think it's looking too sharp I'll get my smudge my smudge tool out and I'll just jiggle it around a bit and I can also go ahead and do some erasing if need be too but for now that's looking pretty good and then on the other side you can go ahead and start placing in some highlight as well now I'm thinking about how much highlight I've got on the right hand side in comparison and if I think some, an area is too bright I'll just erase it and I'll take it back somewhat this is admittingly a fairly difficult face to light correctly you know, again, it's not just about being accurate. You want to make the, the character look sexy. You want to make it look, uh, look hot, right? So that's what I'm trying to attempt here. And, and you know, you, it's your, your job as the colorist to help make that happen too. But that, I think, is looking quite good. And then we can go ahead and start adding in very subtly the secondary forms throughout the rest of her anatomy. And I don't want to run my brush along here. I want to go, you know, somewhere in between and just gently tap, bring out those highlights a bit maybe. And then there's usually two layers of highlight that I like to do just to build up the forms. at the middle of her neck here and you can see how much smaller I get with that second highlight that's to show the the peak of the form you know if I was to make like if I was to make the highlights too broad or the select the selections for the highlights too broad uh, that wouldn't work as well. The, they wouldn't build up as easily or as prominently for that matter. That's a good example there. So I'm narrow, and basically the, the brighter those highlights get, the more narrow they become on the form. Gonna go back on our cheeks here and do the same thing. Making some narrower highlights so that we can get a nice shine effect like like we captured on the on the nose there. So you can see how I'm closing that highlight in on the shoulder. And in order to hide the selection, I'm hitting Control H on my keyboard. That'll be Command H if you're going ahead and using a Mac. I'm 
Okay, so I've just deselected the clothes there. Control H and then add in the highlight. There we go. And now we'll close that highlight in even more. Go back down to the flats, hold Alt on the keyboard to deselect that strap on her top. There we go. And then we'll go through and add in the highlights on her upper arm. Again, going down to the flats to deselect this section. The jewel. Get my airbrush out, make sure I'm on the highlights layer, and then Add that in again I just ran that across the selection I don't want to do that I want to tap gently tap raising the highlight more and more there we have it by the way this beautiful art the line art was created by Julius Gopez who we've got working on the Borok comic which is what you see right here Spin-off of Kozor, Descent into Madness. I've got a link to that in the description below if you want to check it out. So I'll leave the selection of that. It's looking pretty good. And then we'll bring out that highlight like so. That's looking pretty good. I'm looking at my navigator up here too, so I can see it from a distance, whether or not the highlight on her arm there is actually popping as much as it needs to. Whoops, that's too much right there, as you can see. So I'm just going to tap that in like so. Beautiful. That's looking really, really good. Next up, we're going to add in a highlight along her collarbone here, and we're going to bring that out. We'll have a smaller highlight right in the middle of the neck on the collarbone. There we go. We might even have one here up where the shoulder is. There, that's looking good. And then I'm just going to go through and really quickly lay in these highlights. Selecting where I want the highlight to go, then bumping it out with the airbrush. Now we're, we've, we've come down to the chest. So, you know, I want to be kind of careful here as to how I approach the chest. I know that the lightest point is going to be about at the, right right there, so I'm going to tap it in. That's yeah, not looking quite right to me. Whoops. So let's reselect that. Okay, so maybe about there we'll do. It's looking pretty good, I think. And I've got my smudge tool here, just moving that highlight into position as needed. Might even do some erasing here too. Okay, wonderful. So next we'll lay in a highlight for the breast. We're only going to see a little bit of it too. 
in fact. Another highlight on the top of her ribs here, on the top of her chest. Just lay that in like so. And then we've got her other breast here now I want to be really careful about how I go and approach this second booby because it's it's very narrow as you can see so you know that might not have been noticeable in the line art but it's going to be noticeable if I don't color it up properly so that's something that I'm going to be very very aware of right now okay it's looking fairly good I think and, you know, we can even add a highlight here. Let's replace that back in. Maybe about there. That looks good. Maybe not. So I'm thinking about where is the high point of that breast going to be? Maybe it's going to be there. Yeah, that works. Okay. So that pretty much uh, wraps up her skin. So let's go ahead and quickly lay in the highlights for her costuming here. We're just going to be really rough with it. I, I think the hardest part is always going to be the skin of a character. In, in getting the anatomy to look right. And I'm just going to make this, some of these selections pretty narrow. And I'm going to shade it based on exactly what I was thinking about in the beginning, just the, the primary shape of the breast which this is covering. So the material of the top that this lovely lady is wearing is adhering to the major form of the breast. Even though it's got secondary forms upon its surface created by the wrinkles and the folds. All right, so again, I'm going to select that, add a little bit more warmth to it. Okay, desaturate it a bit. And then tap. There we go. Now, again, the 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 hot spot is going to be about here. All right. So I'm just going to tap there, tap up here. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead, get my smudge tool out. I'll rejig these around a little bit as needed. And then I'll make a bunch of new selections. Like so. Again, tap it. And this is just really rushed, but uh, 
we'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that for now. I'm not going to really go too crazy on it. I don't want to refine it too much. Got our lips here. Our teeth. And then, of course, there's this snake thing. So let's just select that on the flats layer again to magically select those areas and we'll just very quickly go over the top there we go there we go done 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 and the cool thing about gold is that it actually usually reflects yellow reflects its surface color rather than the color of the light. Isn't that cool? That's the number one thing to keep in mind when you're rendering gold, if you want it to look like gold. Okay. So I'll just select that area. Give it a nice gold highlight. There we have it. Okay, brilliant. So the other thing I sometimes uh, like to add in is just a little bit of blush to my female characters. Um, you know, around the nose, around the cheeks. And I usually do that on an overlay layer. So we can do, let's name these layers. So we'll call this makeup. And we'll call this highlights. And look, we can even go through them now. So, right. Pretty cool. And uh, with the makeup, we're going to change that to an overlay. Overlay usually works pretty well. And then I'm going to go to a really nice red warm color. And I'm very softly going to just oops, add in around the cheeks some blush. Now I might even change this to multiply actually. Sometimes it just works a little bit better. And you can see how just it it gives the impression that there's some blood in the face, you know? Up around the eyes here too. It's a neat little trick. We could make a new layer, call this uh, spec. And this could be for like really like high intensity highlights. Um, so these are going to be very pinpointed selections here. You want to be careful with these. You don't want to go too overboard, okay? So I'm just bumping that out a little bit. Right, nothing too crazy. On the nose, obviously, we want a little bit of a highlight. Not that much of a highlight. And you can always you know, erase these back if they get too intense. You know, it just it gives it that pop. Gives the skin a slightly more wet and moist appearance. Again, you don't want to look like, you don't want to make it look like the female character has been rolling around in, you know, some oil or what have you, some, some kind of slime, uh, unless that's what you're going for, unless that's your intention. But if it's not, uh, just go go easy on these. Use them only where absolutely necessary. Uh, just as a finishing touch, you know, the cherry on top. So 
See, that's too much there. That's that's just going to be too much. So I'm going to take it out. Could we add it here? Maybe. Maybe. Just tap very lightly. How about that? See, sometimes you just you want to bring it out gradually until it's it's going to look the way that you want it to look. But no, we're not going to add that in there. I don't think it needs it. Sometimes I only know uh, what what needs to happen if I actually give it a shot. Okay, so that's looking yeah, that's too much. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, I could probably go around here on her actual outfit and add a little bit of spec just to see how that looks. Let's give it a shot. There we go, that actually looks pretty good. So we'll leave it at that. Now, uh, as for her eyes, we haven't done those yet. So let's go ahead and just bring them out a little bit. It's a process, this stuff. It, it really, really is. You just, you've got to be patient as with every other part of the comic book illustration process, whether it be as an inker or a penciler or a colorist. You know, illustrating comics, it, it really does take time. I think there needs to be, in general, a greater appreciation for the art form. That's just not me whinging. Uh, that's actually, I, I admire the art form that much that I, I think it needs more of a, more recognition, you know, as to the craftsmanship that goes into this stuff. It's just beyond awesome. It's amazing. Not many people can create comic books well. And, and honestly, there's not that many great colorists out there either. That's why I'm making this tutorial. Like, uh, I want to see better, better colorists out there. So here's a finishing touch, right? Uh, we call this rim light or backlight. Or a secondary light. Let's call it a secondary light. They, they all mean the same thing. But this is what can really make your artwork pop in a very cinematic manner. Okay, so I'm going to go around on the left side of her face, which is the one that is facing away from the light, first and foremost here. And I'm going to add in a, that secondary light that I was talking about. Let me show you how that's going to look. I can actually probably just click on the background light there. I mean, you know, let, let's pick a color that's going to be complementary here. Maybe purple. Something like that. And you don't want to make it too intense. So let's make it a bit bluer. Something like that. Oh yeah, that's great. Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll add the highlight to her neck as well. And this is just really going to make her pop. In a very nice way. You, know, you can also think of this as ambient light. Some, sometimes it's called ambient light, kind of comes in from the other side. I'll place some of it on the underside of the gold here too. Again, you'll notice I've been working from the same distance the entire time. I haven't really zoomed in. I don't want to get distracted by the uh, by the details, the unneeded details that I don't need to worry about. Okay, yeah. Leave that there. 
All right. Now, obviously, there's still things that I could do on this. I could add in the highlights in her hair, of course, and that kind of thing. But, you know, I just wanted to, I wanted to show you the main elements, the main considerations that need to be, yeah, that need to be thought out in order to actually color a female character effectively. Okay, so let's add in. So you can see I'm shrinking my selection now, just as I did before. Oops. There we go. And you can see how quickly I've I've just gone ahead and, and colored her up. Now maybe I could go ahead and add in that secondary rim light on the side of her breast there. Let's see how that looks. If it looks weird, we don't want to do it. It looks a bit weird. Let's leave it out. Okay, cool. So the only other thing that I might go ahead and do, especially at the end, and this is going to look a little strange because you know I mean the rest of the panel isn't colored but what I would normally do is I would go ahead and I would apply apply some adjustment layers so layer new adjustment layer we can go up here to I usually apply a selective color and this is great you can go ahead you can really up the uh, the saturation on certain colors make them pop off of the page. Look at that. That's just beautiful, isn't it? You know, change the darkness. Make it deep. Make it rich. Make it gorgeous. You can really change up everything that you've done in quite a significant way. So this is something that's worth playing around with. Uh, I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. Okay, we'll get out of that. Can also, I also apply... Uh, the curves. Curves are fantastic. Um, so what they're going to allow you to do is up the brightness. So they allow you to try to adjust contrast, essentially. Contrast and brightness. But they just give you a little bit more control. And what's really neat is you can change uh, the different contrasts for red, green, and blue colors throughout your illustration and let me show you how that's going to look right so you can up the red or you can lower the red right so that the, the red isn't going to reside anywhere except for in the darker areas okay uh, actually if you up the red down here it's going to pull the red into the darker areas if you up it up here it's going to pull it into the lighter areas and that kind of thing okay but actually uh, I don't I don't necessarily want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply a regular curves adjustment layer because I quite like how everything's looking as it is. Now, when it comes to print, you want to be careful of this. You don't want to make it too dark. If anything, you want to make it brighter because um, it'll, it'll come out darker in print anyway. Okay, so maybe something like that. That looks pretty good. And then the other adjustment layer that I add in is a color balance. And uh, that's just awesome because it gives you overall control of the... It helps you to hum harmonize all of your colors. All right. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Um, there's our, our lovely lady character all colored up and ready to roll. Now, even though I worked on this from a distance, it still works close up. And that's the number one rule that you want to consider is if something looks good from a distance, it's going to look good close up. So always be judging the image that you're composing from a distance, from a macro level, from a zoomed out perspective. I call it God mode, right? Like you want to be looking down and seeing the full picture 
Uh, you don't want to be focused in on just one little section, one little area, because there's no way of telling whether or not that one little area is actually going to look good with the hole. Okay, so that's about it. Um, again, you know, other things that we could add in just on a, on a very final, final note. See, I'm such a perfectionist, you know, I'm always tweaking this stuff. But you could add some spec to the lips if you want to make them look shiny. And, and that's what spec allows you to do, really, is just make things look shiny. Okay? That's all that you would you would use spec for, really. Okay, but there you have it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like more comic art tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to check out www.howtodrawcomics.net. Over on the site, you'll find a bunch of comic art tutorials video to well written tutorials for comic book artists <laughs> video tutorials uh we've got a bunch of courses by a number of very very talented and specialized instructors among which you may know uh, david finch robert marzullo a bunch of others ed foychuk and of course check out the number one debut title from the button bros kozal descent into madness we've got an indiegogo campaign up for it right now you can still uh, pre-order the book essentially uh, while we work very very hard to get it finished and done and it is looking very very amazing you're going to be blown away by it you're going to be very very impressed um, but yeah other than that take care and i'll see you in the next video bye bye